So, folks, one of the things we know is that Donald Trump hates accountability. Maybe for other people, he's fine with it. But for himself, no, 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 no. He hates it. And one of the things we learned yesterday, not learned because we've known this for years, but one of the things that was reiterated yesterday by a black woman that knows Donald Trump very well, Omarosa, is that Donald Trump hates when women and in particular non-white women hold him accountable. Donald Trump is the one that sees himself as better than everybody, but especially better than people that don't look like him. We know that's who he is. And that means that today he's especially humiliated by nightmare news as Letitia James in New York twists the knife with yet more emergency surprise moves in her bond effort to get all of the money Donald Trump owes, including shocking things that leave Trump humiliated. But also, Fonnie Willis has scored an emergency victory down in Georgia against Trump, and she is celebrating and using it as a chance to go forward. Listen to this. Hit that like and subscribe button because we need to hold Donald Trump accountable. We can only do that with a massive movement. But listen to the victories of Letitia James, and then I'm going to come in at the end because what Fonnie Willis just did, jumping off the vulnerability that Letitia James exposed, is really, really destroying Trump. Tish James has weakened Donald Trump in the last day or two, and Fonnie Willis, seeing that weakness, has made a massive maneuver. Stephanie Grisham, the former White House press secretary for then President Trump and Jonathan Greenberg, investigative journalist who has covered Trump and his finances for decades. Uh, he says that Trump uh, did not tell him the truth when he worked at Forbes about his wealth uh, in an effort to get on the Forbes list of wealthiest Americans. Uh, Ryan, let me start with you. So um, the, just the very basics here. Trump says he's got 100 million. And by the way, he had uh, has pledged as much to E. Jean Carroll in that case. So that would mean a couple hundred million at least have been put forward, says he doesn't have the remainder. But you've read through the filing from the New York attorney general today when she says, well, you could have uh, gotten backing from insurance companies for little pieces of it as opposed to the whole thing. You could have had assets be held by the Supreme Court. Is she correct in her points? Basically, yes. Uh, so she's correct in the sense of there are other options he could have gone with, which is to put some of his property in a receivership that the Supreme Court would then have control over. That would even be smart in some sense, because then at least he chooses the properties. She doesn't choose the properties, so she might go after the Mona Lisas and the like. So those are options he had. He had other, had other options of trying to at least get you know, closer to the 450, 550 million with insurance companies by accumulating it through different um, companies. But he hasn't seemed to do that at all. Um, so there are other we ways in which this is just doesn't make sense. And uh, there's another one as well, which is that he should have probably prepared to lose the case. And if he prepared to lose the case, then he would have actually thought well ahead before any kind of fireside sale. All right. So when you say, you know, a fire, a fire sale, that is the situation that he is in right now, if indeed the option is to sell a property. Uh, Jonathan, and this is exactly what you've looked at. You finished an in-depth analysis of Trump properties here in New York, those Mona Lisas as they refer to them. And I just want to show everybody the math that you did. Uh, this is the fire sale value. So you're knocking 20 to 40 percent off the value of each of these buildings to get to the value on the screen. Uh, ten, the, seven of these uh, properties here in New York that gets you just actually to write about the 464 million dollars that he would need. The point that you're making here is that you got to add all of them together to even get there. Now, he has said that he has 100 million separately. But, uh, Jonathan, how quickly could such a sale happen? You're looking at a lot of properties in five days. Yeah. Oh, I don't think he could raise this money. This is the game plan for Letitia James when she seizes the properties to really seize the properties that are the most valuable and the, the least complicated in terms of moving to a quick sale, which would be probably about 60 days she could sell these, especially if she cuts him out of the deal, as I propose, and deals directly to his partners in the three commercial real estate properties, and then goes directly to sell the apartments and the condominiums, including Trump Tower, 
for their real market value at a reasonable discount of 20%. I've discounted the commercial properties by 40% from what Forbes had estimated a year ago based on the fact that commercial property is not exactly a hot commodity, interest rates are up, and, and rents are really down. So I'm assuming, and, and that Trump probably lied about his cash flow when Forbes reported that a year ago. So basically, it takes a lot of properties. This is 90% of his New York real estate holdings. It's his yeah. seven largest holdings. And it's a game plan for Letitia James to act without Trump, to cut him out of the deal and just focus on getting the money for New York State and put yeah. him on the defensive for the first time instead of the offensive. I'm having, it, not even laughing, but having flashbacks to when all my properties were mortgaged on the board of Monopoly uh, and how badly that felt. All right, so there's another thing that could come into play here, and that's bankruptcy. And Stephanie and Ryan, I want to ask you about that. First, Ryan, uh, in a debate, Hillary Clinton had said uh, Trump declared bankruptcy six times. Washington Post fact checker found that to be true. So this is something he has had no problem doing in the past. And in fact, I don't know what bankruptcy really means when you still get to live the life that he continued to leave even when, quote unquote, bankrupt. Um, so I, I want to ask Stephanie about this now because it's, 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 it's psychological and emotional as well. But could he do this? By Practical and unjust. Let's discuss now with CNN's Elena Trine, Jeff Zeleny. Uh, Jeff, I mean, this is, I mean, this is creeping up on everybody as a, a potentially very big distraction for Donald Trump. I mean, it already is. And this ability, we were talking about this with Renato Mariotti at the top of the program, if Trump doesn't have the ability to pay this bond, I mean, it sets up a whole slew of pretty dire circumstances for the former president. Look, and I yeah. think first and foremost, uh, when you sort of uh, take a bigger look at all this, because it can sort of seem like all these court filings run together. Yeah. The reason this matters more than others is being a big businessman, being a billionaire, which he's not, but being a you know, a, a wealthy businessman is at the core of who he is. That really brought him to uh, the table here. Uh, so this affects him personally in ways that uh, really nothing else does except his family, maybe. I yeah. mean, so this is something that uh, hits to the core of that. So by Monday, when they have to sort of make a decision to declare bankruptcy or sort of find a way to secure this bond, that's why this gets to him, I think. So that's why, uh, despite the back and forth of this case or that case, that's why this one is different, because it goes to the core of who he is. Yeah, but Elaine, I mean, the, the prospect of authority in New York padlocking buildings, seizing buildings. I mean, as, as, uh, it sounds crazy to think about that that could potentially happen, but Renato was saying at the beginning of the program, no, no, that sort of thing could happen. Um, what is going on inside the Trump campaign? How are they responding to some of this? I know we were reporting that uh, Trump was in panic mode and they pushed back on that. Mm -hmm. Well, the Trump camp Donald Trump himself, I should say, personally is very worried about this. And yes, in private, but you're also seeing him air those grievances in public. You saw him post yeah. repeatedly the to, to social about this. He's very frustrated. He's very worried. Um, and look, I think this is a huge concern. We know that they're reaching out to wealthy donors, to, to supporters, trying to see what they can do to potentially make a difference here and also are really hoping that the attorney general and the judge come up with some sort of um, option that may alleviate the situation for him. But at the same time, I mean, his team also is in such dire financial situations. We saw some of the financial reports last night just of what they're raising. They're far behind the Biden campaign and the money that they are raising. And all of these these judgments, the trials, he still has a lot of legal expenses that he needs to pay for. They are very much weighing on the campaign. They recognize that they are far behind um, in the money game, especially yeah. when you compare it to what Biden is raising. And so this is just another component of that that is really putting a lot of pressure on Donald Trump as well. As yeah, campaign. I mean, we've been talking for months about the collective weight of all of these criminal prosecutions, but the, the financial mm -hmm. uh, bill that is coming due for Donald Trump, I mean, this, this really could uh, wreak a lot of havoc. Uh, Jeff, let me uh, get into uh, this other. Bad. I want to bring in Bill Cohan of Puck, who has reported extensively on this. Nice to see you, Bill. Uh, let's nice start with what Kara was just talking about, that uh, Trump's attorneys say that he's tried, tried very hard to get a bond and it's not possible. Can you break down why he couldn't get one? Well, Dana, thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, he, he can't really get one because he's not a good credit risk. Dana. He, he hasn't been a good credit risk for a very long time. Uh, w during the 90s, uh, you know, six or so of his uh, companies went bankrupt. So that is something that uh, annoys creditors across Wall Street who have long memories. 
Uh, and he's also been known to not pay contractors and subcontractors and lawyers. So people remember that. And so when he's seeking a bond for more than $500 million, the risk of him paying, of him losing uh, his appeals or his judgment against him falls to those bond issuers, mm -hmm. not to him. And then they'd have to go after him if they don't pay, if he doesn't pay them. So, uh, you know, they don't want to take that risk. Why should they? Why should anybody take that risk at the moment? He's proven himself to be a very risky credit risk. Okay, so let's take getting a bond off the table then. And yes. let's look at his assets, because that is another way that he can pay uh, this $500 billion uh, judgment. And some of the assets that we're talking about, and we'll give some of what we think are their worth, uh, the uh, Avenue of Americas, $500 million, 40 Wall Street, $270 million, uh, California Street, which is in San Francisco, $125 million. Now, some of these he owns, some of these he has an investment in, uh, so we can talk about that. And then also Mar-a-Lago, of course, $240 million, which I believe he owns outright, uh, the Doral golf course, which he loves, $305 million, and the famous Trump Tower penthouse, which uh, is apparently worth about $40 million. What are your thoughts on those? Yeah, the two uh, properties, the one on the Avenue of the Americas, the one in San Francisco, are out owned by Vernado, a mm -hmm. different company. He owns a minority stake in those. Uh, I don't think he's going to have much luck uh, with that minority stake, using that as collateral for a bond. Um, you know, so and I and I, I think also those prices are probably pretty high for both of those that you put on the screen. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in his deposition, as you'll remember, in, in April of last year, in this case, he said he had 400 million in cash and growing every day. Uh, that apparently doesn't seem to be the case because if he had that kind of cash, uh, he'd be using that as collateral. Uh, we're also talking about a, you know a pretty distressed uh, market for commercial real estate in Manhattan these days. Uh, and so, I'm, you know, how quickly he can get the money uh, if you were have to sell these buildings, uh, people would want to take advantage of that. It'd be a distressed sale. They'd try to take advantage. We also don't know how much leverage, how much debt is already on some of these buildings mm -hmm. because you know he's a private company. He doesn't have to disclose that. All some of that does get out. Uh, I think he has got debt and mortgages on all of these properties. Mm. So, you know, what is the equity value of these things? That's another thing that, uh, you know, the bonders are going to look for. You know, if you sum it all up, Dana, I'm thinking at this point, he really isn't going to have much choice but to file for personal bankruptcy. And I know that's something he doesn't want to do, uh, and has said he doesn't want to do, but uh, it would stay this judgment. It would throw it all into bankruptcy court, and that would buy him the time that he so desperately needs wow, in this you, situation. You think that's the most likely scenario, that he files for bankruptcy? That would be a big deal for a, a presidential candidate of any kind, but particularly one who uh, is running on his prowess as a business person. Yes, of course, but I, I think he could, he's the master spinner, right? So he'll be able to spin that uh, if it happens. Uh, I'm sure he'll spin that in a way that'll appeal to his backers. No question. Uh, but I don't really see that he has any other choice at this point. I don't see who's gonna give him it, this money. L let me just ask you about that before I let you go, because mm. It is, I guess, possible for him to get money from an outside investor or backer. He could get it from uh, another billionaire that's more liquid. He could potentially get it from a foreign national. But then that, of course, uh, brings in other problems when it comes to his presidential campaign and campaign finance laws. Right. And I think even if you were to get the money from another billionaire who would be you know, a bit crazy to do it, but it could happen, uh, that might run afoul of federal election mm -hmm. laws as well. That would be a very big donation to a presidential yeah. candidate. Yeah, so I guess. So you could see that, right? It's absolutely humiliating. And here's what Fonnie Willis is doing. You could see on the headline here that the efforts of Trump have failed and that she's moving forward. And in other headlines we've been seeing is she is going for the jugular today, saying to the judge, this is our opportunity to have the trial. We need to go in the summer. So she's celebrating by putting the BS smears behind her and moving forward with the trial well before election day with a chance to have it done maybe by election day. And she knows that Donald Trump is distracted right now with the bond stuff. He can't fight back because she has trapped him with the other cases as well. It is so awesome to see.